Welcome to Downeyville, California. Thank you guys for tuning into thelonewolf.com. My name is Drew and we are really excited to be here. We got exclusive access to come up with Santa Cruz to one of their favorite testing grounds here in the Sierra Mount range to test the brand new Heckler e-bike. Now the Heckler was first introduced in 1996 by Rob Roskop and the Santa Cruz Bike Company as sort of a disruption to the, the status quo in the bike industry. E-bikes obviously are now disrupting the scene in a major way and Santa Cruz thought it would be a pertinent time to bring the Heckler back. We're super excited they did. We've been bugging these guys for probably like the last 10 months about when this thing's coming out. We finally got the invite and we're gonna tell you a little bit about this new bike, some of the features, the technology, and uh, what our ride impressions have been so far over the last couple of days of getting this thing muddy. The new Heckler is 160 millimeters of front travel, 150 millimeters of rear wheel travel. It does utilize Santa Cruz's lower links VPP suspension design and it is only available in their CC carbon frame offering and it's been a lot of fun to ride so far. There will be four build kits available starting at $7,399 and going all the way up to $13,000 if you opt to go for the fully SRAM AXS equipped models uh, with all the bells and whistles. All the bikes will be coming with 27.5 inch wheels Something that Santa Cruz has just developed is a uh, reserve 27.5 inch downhill rear wheel. That's something that they're featuring on their e-bikes. Obviously the added weight, wear, tear, and abuse that comes on these bikes is, is worthy of having a DH level wheel. These bikes are pretty light for the category. They're 46 pounds and change, which is definitely a couple pounds lighter than a lot of other bikes in this 160, 150 range. Now it features a Shimano Steps E8000 motor, uh, an integrated Shimano 504 watt hour battery in the down tube. There are no keys required to remove the battery. Uh, simply undo the battery cover and pull it out with some four millimeter Allens. Uh, you're ready to charge the battery in or out of the bike. If you got an extra battery in your pack, you can swap it out for some big Epics, which Downeyville is full of. Obviously, Santa Cruz is a brand founded on the principles of, you know, hardcore and aggressive riding, you know, making a bike that's for mountain bikers. The Heckler is no different. Santa Cruz used the Bronson as the starting point for this new frame and wanted to maintain the bike's overall agility, ability to be ridden over a variety of terrain. Something that was a real big struggle when Santa Cruz first started out with building this EMTB was getting that lower link VPP suspension design to work. But engineers like mountain bikers enjoy a challenge and after lots of revisions and testing, they were able to find something that worked. It does have some revised kinematics compared to Santa Cruz's pedal bikes. It's also got a lot lower anti-squat. Um, it makes the bike a bit more comfortable when you're seated and pedaling. One of the benefits of you know having an e-bike is that you can sit down, pedal, you're going over a lot more terrain for a lot longer distance. So having a little bit more comfort in the saddle is uh, definitely a good thing because you're not always standing up to pedal over the rough stuff. The geometry on the Heckler is very well rounded. It is uh, totally suited for just all around trail riding. We climbed some incredibly steep and tight switchbacks here in Downeyville. We got going faster than I could take my eyes off the, the trail to look at the speedometer, but this bike was very well suited for the type of terrain that, that most mountain bikers are gonna experience on the trail. It's not overkill if you're riding somewhere flat and a little more, more mellow, and it's not gonna feel skittish or squirmish when uh, the going gets fast and steep. The bike has a 65.5 degree head tube angle, 445 millimeter chain stays, a 465 millimeter reach, with a 620 millimeter stack height. The seat tube angle on our size large test bike is 76 degrees, and the wheelbase is 1,237 millimeters. The bottom bracket height on the Heckler is 346 millimeters, which we felt was a really nice blend of not being overly low and not being too high that it affected the cornering capabilities of the bike. A lot of e-bikes uh, we've learned over time, if a bottom bracket's too low, 
you're gonna be constantly bashing pedals and crank arms into any sort of obstacle uh, on the trail because you're just pedaling so much more. So over the last two days, we've probably put in close to 10,000 vertical feet of riding and uh, probably near 50 miles of self-shuttled, you know, human and battery powered riding. So many people will come and travel here from afar and, and ride one trail and one trail only because that's the shuttle trail. And with having a battery and an e-bike, we've been able to get out and explore trails that were, you know, created by miners, dirt bikers, whoever it might have been. And we're now able to have a bunch of fun exploring and riding on trails that really probably wouldn't have been that much fun or maybe a once a year kind of torture fest on a pedal bike. The 504 watt hour battery was, you know, on some rides a little bit small. We would have liked to seen a little bit better, you know, battery range out of it. The flip side to that is we've got a 46 pound bike, which when we're back home on our one to two and a half hour loops, we're gonna have a lot more fun on. The revised suspension kinematics on the Heckler e-bike definitely were pretty well suited again to a, a wide variety of trails. We did mess around a little bit with sag, air pressures. We made some adjustments along the way. The bike did a good job. We never really had any qualms or issues with it. It felt a little bit rough off the top, so that's why we'd like to maybe adjust the sag a little bit, get these bikes back on our home trails, really spend some time getting to know them better. Where we found that the bike excelled really well was tight terrain, ripping around switchbacks here in Downingville. Uh, there's no shortage of those, so it was a ton of fun coming into corners. These 27 and a half inch wheels were super just flickable, playful, popping this bike into the air, whether there's some little fadeaway step downs or rock gardens that you wanted to gap. The bike did a really good job there. There's lots of cliffside, really high risk, high consequence single track lots of rugged rocks, and the bike did really well there. Once you get into the suspension travel and it starts act, being active and moving through, the bike has great traction, it stays planted. However, if you really want to yank up and unweight the bike over the trail, you've got the ability to do so. So far, we've been very impressed. It's a very capable bike. It's been a lot of fun. It jumps well, it slams corners well. I mean, it tackles rock gardens really well. It's got a good spec, you know, $7,300 price point for the entry. It's definitely kind of getting into that dedicated e-bike buyer. Someone who wants an e-bike, wants a high performance e-bike, wants to take advantage of Santa Cruz's carbon fiber technology and get into a CC level frame. They got thought out geometry. They've got a, a pretty reliable and sound Shimano step system, battery and motor. Their new DI2 integrated bars keep the cockpit really nice and neat. And these were all things that Santa Cruz thought about when they were putting this bike together. We think it looks great. It is available in two colors, which is this high-vis uh, yellow. I think they call it yellow jacket yellow and uh, a quieter black with some gold highlights, which is really sharp and would probably be our go-to selection. But for photo and video, this thing pops. We'd like to extend a big thanks to Santa Cruz for getting us early access to this bike, bringing us out here to Downeyville. Really enjoyed getting out on this bike and riding again in the trails that helped spur the brand on to make this e-bike and bring the Heckler back to the public. Stay tuned, we are hoping to get one of these bikes home in the near future, and we'll be working on a long-term review where we can really get into a lot more of the, uh, the details and how the bike performs in a wide variety of terrain. So thanks again for tuning in, guys. We'll see you on the trails.